Hey, this is Digital by Computing, and today we're gonna to talk about the Disaster Recovery Plan. This is a plan that every organization needs to have, needs to update regularly, and we're gonna talk about it right now. Hey, my name is Emilio, and I work in the IT industry, and whether you work in a small, medium, or large business, you need to have a DRP, or a Disaster Recovery Plan, in place. This plan is imperative to know what your company will do in the case of a disaster, hence the name suggests. In, this, in the event of a disaster, what is your Disaster Recovery Plan? Now we are focusing primarily around the IT aspect of a disaster recovery plan. But what you'll find is most businesses, or some businesses, not all of them, will have a general DRP, a disaster recovery plan that involves a number of different components, and a component of that will be the IT component of that DRP. So that is what we're focusing on. So once you have an established DRP plan, there should be places where you can easily access it. Uh, whether if it's um, on you know various servers across your network, whether if it's on your intranet, you obviously should have printable copies because if your networks are infected, if your you know if your systems are down, you need physical printed copies. There could be copies given to certain VIP, certain partners in your organization. Make sure that there are multiple copies so that in the case of a DR, you do have copies available to be able to follow. So my general DR plan, the start is I'm just gonna give a general overview. What is the DR plan? What is the DRP? What is it about? Who am I going to uh, invoke if, if this DRP happens? You know, um, talk about things such as, this is gonna be used for IT in the event of a disaster. So you wanna have your usual sections in this document. You know, who, who is this uh, document for? Uh, you want to have such as an overview, a scope, an audience, those sort of sections where you can fill out that are going to be relevant for your organization. You then got what's called a DRPO or Disaster Recovery Plan Organization. This is essentially a small group or a large group, essentially it's a smaller company of people that will get together when a disaster recovery scenario occurs. So in the case of a disaster, there needs to be an allocated group of people available or allocated that they know what their responsibilities, what their roles and their responsibilities are in the case of a disaster. This could be members of perhaps members of the board. It could be members of you know, upper IT management. It could be members of your HR, your, your finance committees, for example. In an IT scenario, you're gonna have members such as particular technical people that have particular technical skills um, to be able to invoke and actually get your systems up and running and be the central points of contact when it comes to your disaster recovery operations. You wanna have a DR coordinator in place as part of your organization. This is the person that is essentially gonna be running the show, the ones who are gonna initiate a DR scenario, the ones that are gonna be you know, in contact with all the necessary parties, the third parties, and the people that are inside your business to be able to go and coordinate and effectively execute this disaster recovery plan. You'll also then have your DR infrastructure team. Now, depending on the size of your organization, this group could be small, could be large. You may have a small group that can sort of bundle together into this infrastructure team, or you could have more specialized roles. But your infrastructure team will generally be made up of some form of infrastructure management, uh, somebody that's responsible for the network, someone that's responsible for servers, for storage, for security, um, perhaps somebody that can do some sort of desktop, laptop support if, if there is a scenario where they need to have that expertise. You need to have somebody that is proficient in the backup and the disaster recovery um, set up of your organization. This is something that is imperative. So obviously before you invoke some sort of a DR, you obviously wanna have some sort of um, backups already in place. Backups that are in place every single day that they're running, that your servers are up to date, that they're going off site, you know, and that you can go back in time if you need to. Um, there's no point in having backups and keeping them on site because in the scenario where your building burns down or there is an issue in your building itself, then you won't be able to recover those backups. So making sure that there's somebody available on backups that will be able to give you, um, or give the coordinator 
a view as to how to restore any services that may have been lost as part of this disaster. And then you want to have some application people involved as well. So on top of your um, your infrastructure team, which are the ones who are going to be core, you know part of your core infrastructure, your networks, your storage, your servers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you want to have people who are now going to be responsible for restoring or, or giving the best direction um, to restore services on top of the infrastructure, right? So people such as your database admins, if you've got third-party software, you know, whether you have to go to third-party providers outside of that can actually give you um, advice on how to restore certain systems. So this is gonna be a group of people, whether you have one pool of application DR people or whether you're breaking it up, there needs to be people on here that will be able to be contactable in the case of a disaster to be able to restore the applications to the infrastructure once the infrastructure is all back up and running. Picking the group of people that you are gonna have as part of your organization are ex is extremely important. You wanna make sure that there are people that are reliable. You wanna make sure that there are people that you can call up at 3 a.m. when the building has burned down or your data center has gone and they're available and they know how to do their thing. You don't wanna have people on board that are gonna be um, delaying your process of you getting your operations back up and running. Because if you're watching this, you are interested in getting your systems up and running as quickly as possible. So make sure you have people on board that are quick to respond, that know how to respond, and that know their stuff. Now also, don't have reliance necessarily on one person. If you have a, if you have a team of network people, don't rely on one network person only. Perhaps have a couple or three people that are in networks um, that are sort of on standby and that are all part of this network team, for example, so that in an event of a DR, if one person is unavailable, you can call on a second person. A communication plan and assembly. What is the communication plan? What is the medium going to be for us to communicate with everybody? If your emails are still up, let's say in the scenario where your, your data center is gone, but your emails are cloud-based, you know they're hosted up on the cloud office 365 or something like that, you may still be able to contact people via email, but the best scenario is definitely to have a some sort of phone. There could be a particular phone number that you've got configured that is used for disasters only, but you need to outline what your communication plan will be. Who, what is the communication medium gonna be? And where is the assembly area going to be? In the case of a disaster, where do we go? Where do we assemble? If the building is available, but maybe your data center is gone or parts of your comm center are gone, you can still perhaps meet at your office. If that's unavailable, you need to have some sort of alternate meeting place where you can discuss um, you know, what, what do we do. You also need to have a disaster recovery review panel listed in your DRP. So this is the group of people, generally there will be VIP, people that can make management director type of decisions that will be responsible for reviewing your DRP, your disaster recovery plan, and signing it off. Saying yes, everything that is in here is okay with me, I'm happy to take the fall if something happens um, as a result of this or we cannot, or we cannot restore because of something like this. They, you need to have people on this that are essentially people of importance that can sign off your disaster recovery plan. We then move on to the incident type response and recovery. What has happened, how do we respond, and how fast do we respond? First one is incident type. What has happened? Now there are many, many different types of incidents, right? A disaster may not just be the building burning down, we need to find somewhere else to, to set up shop and get all our IT back up and running. There should be various different types of incident types listed in your disaster recovery plan. Things such as your data center is unavailable, or your comm center is unavailable, your head office is unavailable, your network is down, perhaps your, your ISP is unavailable, you know, your, your telecom provider is now no longer available. That would be scenario for disaster because you can't communicate with anything. Loss of a primary server a loss of a storage medium, a loss of a network device inside of your comm center. If your primary SAN or your primary storage medium is gone and all of your servers are gone, that's case for a disaster. A power failure, your building or your data center has run out of power. The UPS systems, you know, the backup generators are all gone, they're run out. Cyber and hacking attack disasters. These are coming more and more common every single day, but they are a real threat where a business has been infected, systems are out available, you perhaps got ransomware, you, you're, you're getting pop-ups everywhere, your systems are out of, out of whack, you have to invoke disaster recovery. 
environmental pandemic or other. These are things that are out of your control. There's been a, a natural disaster. There's some sort of virus going around, you know, bubonic plague, some crazy stuff going on. The war, there's a war going on. These sort of disasters are very rare, but they are very real. And they're very real in a lot of places. So you need to have plans in place where let's say there's a huge infection taking place in the, in the CBD area, perhaps where your building is, is um, located in the central business area, you know, downtown, you have to go somewhere else because that area is unavailable. So each one of these incidents will initiate a different response and recovery. In some scenarios, it could be fairly quick to get things up and running again. In other scenarios, it could be a lot longer. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months. Really depends on the particular incident type. But for example, in the case where perhaps you've got a power outage and your UPS has run out of battery, that could be literally only a couple of hours until your power company gets back up online. Or perhaps your fuse box is blown up and you need to call an electrician out to fix that. That could be only a matter of time to get things up and running. If your data center has burned down, it's no longer available, that could be several days or weeks because it requires you to set up shop in a new data center, purchase new equipment, recover data, etc. Each one of these scenarios will require a different response. What do we do against each one of those incident types? So what I'll have in my, DRP, in my DRP is I will have my incident type, let's say loss of data center, and then all of my response and recovery underneath each of that and a big outline of exactly what we will do in this scenario. I'll then move on to the next incident type. You know, there's been a plague, right? What do we do in that scenario? There's now been a, um, a power outage. What do we do in this scenario? So you break it down based on the scenario. There's no point in having a single DR plan for a one sort of incident because every incident will, will require a different response. So you outline in there exactly what the response and the recoveries will be for each scenario. You wanna have who is responsible for what? What is the role now of your disaster recovery um, organization. So this plan that we talked about, this organization plan that we talked about, where you've got your coordinators, you've got your infrastructure team, you've got your application guys, what is their roles now? What are they responsible for doing? Every scenario will be different, so every response will be different. Do they need to go and purchase new hardware? Do they need to go and restore data? You know, how far back do they need to go? Do we need a different site? Perhaps the site is no longer available. Do we just need to purchase a new UPS? So have a think about every single scenario regarding re requiring a different response and a different technician, a different infrastructure person, um, you know, performing a different task to get your systems back up and running. So that section will be the biggest section of your disaster recovery plan. That'll probably be an 80% of your DRP will just be listing out the scenarios and what the responses will be in each scenario, okay? Think about some scenarios in real life cases where things have gone wrong and then allocate your resources accordingly and give them particular tasks to do in those scenarios. Once the fire is out, this is post incident, once your fire is out and everything is now back up and running, you now need to review your disaster recovery plan and how it all went. So my general recommendation is within seven days, Get everybody involved, all the necessary parties involved together in a big meeting room and discuss what happened, how did we go, what can we do better next time. Do it within seven days because the longer and longer you wait, your you know, people's minds are gonna get sketchy, you may not have documented everything as the, as the disaster was taking place because you've got better things to be doing, you've got to be getting things up and running. So the sooner you do it, the better it is, and the better you will perform the next time a disaster happens. Talk about things such as what worked well, what didn't work well, what can we do better next time. Document as many things as you can in this open session. Get people to go ahead and document, perhaps in that session, or take them out to do it in their own time. Document what they did, what they learned, what can we do better individually for each individual component. Discuss the resolutions, how we did, what was our response time? Why was our response time so long? Why did we do good on some things but not good on others? And then update your DRP. Once uh, you know exactly what's happened, 
how you went, etc. You then need to talk about updating your DRP. So have that in your resolution, in your post stuff afterwards. Talk about um, raising necessary tickets and changes for your particular technicians or management on items that need to be raised and fixed um, prior to the next disaster happening. Down the bottom of my DRP, I will have a section of all of my key contacts. Every single contact that's involved in disaster. So we're talking about the organization, your key contacts, which were your, you know, your primary your stakeholders, perhaps board members, people who will sign off, any third party companies that need to get involved. You know, for example, a contact at Microsoft, a contact at Dell, a contact at HP, a contact at EMC, all these sorts, all these contacts that you may need to consult in, this, in the case of a scenario, um, a disastrous scenario. Underneath that area, have an area where you have outlines of perhaps what your infrastructure currently looks like. Have some network diagrams, a LAN diagram if you have multiple sites, multiple LAN diagrams, a WAN diagram for your overall um, approach of what your WAN looks like, have the link speeds between all of your points, because remember in the, in the case of a scenario, um, a disaster scenario, if your network is gone, you need a printed copy and you, be able, you want to be able to see what your WAN looks like. And so you can maybe pinpoint where the issue may be. Have pictures of your rack diagrams, of all of your you know, photos, pictures of your, of your comms cabinets, of your data centers, exactly all your equipment of what's in there. Anything else that is relevant, maybe a list of all of your servers, a list of all of your core applications, a list of anything that you will need Anything that is core to your business, have it listed in this disaster recovery, in the summary down the bottom, in this disaster recovery plan. So that is my summary of what a DRP should include. Now, every organization may differ slightly in the content um, of a DRP. So feel free to comment below. I would love to hear your feedback on improving existing DRP plans that I am uh, working on. And perhaps this found you know that you found this helpful. So comment below and let me know if you did find it helpful. Um, the only thing that we can do is we can contribute better so that we can stop and uh, you know recover our systems quicker if a disaster was to happen. So uh, I hope you found this helpful, and we'll see you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.